show about cars, their owners, and the romance around them. I'm Jen. And I'm Steve Horowitz. And today we'll be looking at Peter Gatch's car, a 1947 Mark VI Bentley. Business owner, father, and husband. He has three daughters, which are his joy. He's the treasurer of the Bentley Drivers Club, Lake Michigan area. His hobbies are working, hanging out with his daughters, driving friends for their weddings and special occasions, and of course, exotic cars. Hello, hi, my name is Peter Gatch, and I want to tell you about, this is a Mark VI Bentley. This is made in 1947. Uh, the first thing that, of uh, distinction, I want to tell you about this car is the Mark VI Bentley was the first model that went into production after World War II at the Rolls-Royce factory. Uh, another thing that's unique about it is this is also the first model where uh, Rolls-Royce Bentley, which were the same company at the time, uh, made the entire vehicle. Uh, if you hired a, pardon me, if you bought a Rolls-Royce or a Bentley prior to World War II, you had to hire a separate company called a coach builder, and it wouldn't be uncommon sometimes to wait a couple years to get your car. People were very patient back then. Uh, but of course, people want immediate gratification, so eventually the manufacturer transitioned to selling the entire vehicle, and the uh, Rolls-Royce Bentley together bought uh, Moliner Park Ward coach builders and made them in-house. And so this is the first model where you could literally go to the dealer and uh, in some cases drive off in a vehicle, though still most people did somewhat of a bespoke vehicle, meaning a custom vehicle, they still had to wait a little bit. Uh, the original owner of this vehicle is of some distinction. The original owner was uh, Lady Violet Astor and John Jacob Astor V. And uh, I have the original title. The title, address of the title is uh, just Hever Castle, which is interesting, uh, kind of a British thing, no street. And uh, the, uh, so anyway, uh, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the vehicle and a few things. So uh, now one thing you'll notice with, with uh, the Mark VI, if you look at a lot of pre-war cars, you'll notice that the headlights, such as this fog light, are often independent. They're on a stalk. They're not built into the sheet metal of the, of the, uh, body and the, and the, the coach work. So uh, this is one of the first ones where they started to integrate the headlight. You can see that's why it sort of looks so odd where it swoops down where a pre-war vehicle, you know, the fender would come down to a point and the hood would come up and this headlight would be on a stock, what they often call like a P100. So anyway, uh, it's kind of interesting and, if, and you'll notice if you look at different eras of Rolls-Royce Bentley uh, that, you know, like the next model you'll see a little bit more coach work here and eventually as you get into the 1970s it's smooth, you know, with, um, so it's kind of neat to watch the evolution of coach work and, and, and the designs of the body. But uh, anyway, it's a nice headlights, vents. Here's the iconic Bentley grille. Uh, also, uh, because it's angled as opposed to like the Rolls-Royce grille that is flat and has the Parthenon shape. And here's, of course, your flying lady and all that as well. You know, very important to the, the Bentley and all that. So, uh, Okay, so this is the Bentley engine. Uh, these particular models had what's called an inline six. Uh, something amusing about Bentleys at the time, if you asked the horsepower, they simply would reply, it's adequate. They didn't always disclose the horsepower. Another thing that's unique uh, and, and kind of special about this vehicle, uh, well, forgive me, it's not the only vehicle that has it, but this vehicle has what's called a Bezier system. Uh, this is a non-detergent oil. This is a separate reservoir, and there's actually a lever under the dash that you step on, and when you do that, it lubricates the chassis and around the whole vehicle. Uh, the distinction of that is if you had a pre-war vehicle, uh, especially if you look at the old early, uh, you know, Phantoms and Ghosts, they have a box on the fender, and you open up that box, and guess what's in there? It's an oil can. So the owner would have to go around and, e e e e, you know, <laughs> and oil the vehicle. So it's kind of nice that they developed where it would uh, lubricate. But you still have to step on the pedal, and something that's amusing in Bentley circles is they say, don't do it in your driveway, because it, it leaves a lot of residue and all that. So, and all that. So, uh, but uh, another thing that the Bentleys and Rolls Royces, for that matter, were very well known for is a silent running engine. You know, it's it's very quiet. So, you know, when I start the engine, you'll see, you know, just how quiet it is. It's it's and uh, it's a push button start. That's another thing too. So, uh, uh, but to start it, you do have to uh, choke the engine and you have to set the idle speed before you start it. Okay. And, well, let's go inside and start the engine. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna. I have to turn uh, two places. I have to turn the vehicle on and give it a second to charge up. I have to set my throttle speed or uh, basically makes the engine rev and also a little bit of a choke. Uh, this third adjustment here is for the ride height, which I usually don't mess with that. And then it's a push button start. 
Now it has a key, but you don't use the key to start it. The key would just lock the button. So it's always, it's always amusing. I always joke that anybody could hop in and steal the vehicle if they actually knew how to drive it. <laughs> so let me start her up. What was the adjustment that you did over here on the steering wheel once it started? Okay, well I had it, I had it, the throttle fully open, which is basically revving the engine. Okay. So it's just like giving a little bit of gas. Right. And all that. Which, you know, you don't necessarily want to step on the, the gas pedal too much. You don't want to flood the engine, so right. it gives them gas. And then this this uh, where it says mixture, you shifted the start, is basically like a choke. So I put it back to the run position because I don't want to, you know, overdo it. Right, that. you don't want to choke it too yeah. much. Uh, something, another thing that's sort of amusing about this vehicle, I always joke, this has a two-band radio, AM and shortwave. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> well, we need that. Yeah, you need shortwave radio, yeah. And you can see it's got the old, you know, the original down the gauges, you know, my speedometer here and... Uh, yeah, I was always amused when I saw the speedometer from Bentley and Rolls-Royce going from from the right side, going down and around. Yes. Even though it's clockwise, it's upside down. Yeah. Well, many things British are different right. than in America. You know, we're on the right-hand side of the car. It's, it's, by the way, this is a four-speed manual transmission. So that's another thing that's kind of amusing is I have to shift the gears in between oh, my knee and the door. So uh, this has a four-speed manual transmission, and uh, it's not that it's not it's surprisingly not as hard to drive once you get used to it. But you have to get used to if you're American, to driving on the right-hand side, <laughs> and also shifting with your right hand and uh, in between um, your knee and the door, which is a little bit tight. But I've always managed. Uh, another thing that you'll notice too is this vehicle has uh, what they call coach doors, or what some other people refer to as suicide doors. So many, not all, but many of the Bentleys and Rolls Royces, you know, you'll have the doors. Uh, some have the rear doors hinged in the back, and the front doors hinged in the front. But that's always something that looks a little bit unique to people when I open the door. And so regarding the right-hand drive over here in America, we call it wrong-hand drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but well, you know, I, people are not aware that. Um, Half the countries in the world do left-hand drive and half the countries do right-hand drive. They just think it's England and Australia or something. Well, I still have to drive on the right-hand side of the road, so that's... <laughs> but, uh, but no, you know, it's, it's, it's like anything, uh, you get used to it, you know. Right. A little bit of practice, you get used to it, just like, just like driving manual transmission. So now we're going to go for a ride in the car, and we have this nice luxurious back seat with the mirror and the light. And we have... Crystal cigarette lighter. Oh, and there's a crystal cigarette lighter here. Except nobody smokes anymore. Yeah. <laughs> a thing of the past. And we have a nice sunroof. Okay. So what fun things have you experienced while owning this car? Well, the main thing is just fun weekend driving. Uh, try and drive the car every weekend when the weather's appropriate. Um, done a couple weddings for friends. Um, that's kind of fun as well. And uh, certainly uh, car shows and club outings, you know, with the uh, RROC and BDC, the Rolls Royce Summers Club and the Bentley Drivers Club. So those are fun. Uh, have activities going on you know. have you won awards with this car yes um, I've taken us to the uh, Concord de Elegance with the uh, Lake Michigan region Rolls-Royce Owners Club and it's often a uh, gotten second place I, I think maybe once I got first place uh, but usually second uh, the, the car does have interesting ownership history however something about I was telling you about the pre-war versus the post-war cars earlier you know, being a post-war car where they made the factory made the whole thing, they made 5,000 of these. I don't know how many. Oh, that's, that's an awful lot. Survived to this day. But, uh, so the vehicle itself isn't as rare as, say, a pre-war car. So, and then also there's, you know, still custom cars, there's convertibles, uh, some very fancy coupes. Uh, you know, those often, if they're in the show with me, they'll get first place because they're just more rare and unique. Uh, 
And, and in English terms, they call it a drop head. In yes. America, we say convertible. Forgive me. <laughs> The most interesting thing about this particular vehicle is its ownership history, and that's what's part uh, unique about owning a Rolls Royce or a Bentley is that sometimes you have very interesting ownership history. So, the original owner of this car was uh, John Jacob Astor V and his wife Lady Violet Astor. Um, John Jacob Astor V is not the one that died on the Titanic; that was his uncle. Uh, his father, brother to John Jacob Astor IV, was William Waldorf Astor who was the founder and owner of the Waldorf Astoria Hotels, that people may have heard of those hotels. So, um, Anyway, uh, another thing that's interesting, so they, uh, they were a fairly well-off family, and uh, they bought a castle in England, and the castle in England that they bought was called Hebert Castle, and I actually have the original title, and something that's interesting and very British is when you look at the... Uh, uh, that's the seller of the vehicle. When you look at the first owner here, lady, it says Lady Violet Astor. They had it in the lady's name. The address, it just says Heber Castle. Yeah. Very interesting. Then, you know, the next owner was uh, titled as well. So he was a he was a baron. And then the next owner was the Marquis of Lansdowne, titled person as well. But anyway, the uh, the Heber Castle was over a thousand years old. And, and at one point, it was the uh, home of the Boleyn sisters that married King Henry VIII. And uh, so John Jacob Astor, uh, when he bought that castle, he, want, he decided he wanted to build a pond. So he, he employed 700 men for two years to build a pond behind the castle. So he had some disposable income, shall we say. But that's the home of the, the original home of the car and uh, kind of interesting history.